Hello and welcome to this last video um, in our section on data manipulation in R. This video is intended only for those who are, are already familiar with the JSON data format. So if you're not familiar with the JSON data format, you can skip this video. Um, there's really nothing in here that you know will benefit you. But if you ever do find yourself needing to parse JSON objects and JSON data, um, you can come back and, and just go through this video uh, to get an idea of how to do that. So, so JSON file types or data type is a very common format for the passing of data or, you know, the passing of complex data back and forth between um, different entities, you know, most commonly web entities. So like between an API or to retrieve data from an API or from a web server and that kind of stuff. So it allows for you to pass, a, you know, very complex data or multi-dimensional data, even um, data that, you know, you might normally require a relational database for can also be structured as a JSON. So this video is not intended as a course in JSON and how JSON works and that kind of stuff. Again, if you are familiar with JSON or you need for some reason to parse JSON or to convert um, JSON files into R objects and vice versa, then this video is for you. So the library we're going to be using to do that is a library called JSON Lite. There are a number of libraries but for most cases you won't require any advanced parsing so json lite is pretty standard it's pretty quick um, it's very easy to use and i've never found myself having to need any other json parsing package so json lite is uh would be your preferred option um you have to obviously go ahead and install it before you can load it so let's wait for that to install let's load that so there are essentially two functions within um, JSON Lite, and those are to JSON and uh, from JSON. So to JSON, obviously, you know, as it makes sense um, from the name of the function, converts an R object into a JSON object, and from JSON converts from a JSON object into an R object. And in terms of you know what objects are convertible, you know. You can convert lists or data frames or even arrays into JSON um, objects. This function is pretty powerful um, in that it really does a lot of the heavy lifting and, and you don't have to really be too careful about um, the structure of the R object you're feeding into it. So um, let's use a quick example. Remember uh, the empty cars data set. Um, let's convert the empty cars data set into a JSON object. Okay, so we would use to json because empty cars is currently not an, a json object and if we were to convert it into a json object this is what we would be getting those of you familiar with json you know this should look pretty familiar to you if not it's okay so whenever you have an application or a web api or, or a server or something that requires a json object this is all you need to do you convert it and this is now a single you know string a single piece of text and you can just send that in to wherever you need to send it into. Um, now, imagine you got something like this from a, a, an API. Um, okay, so traditionally, you know, that it might be very hard to parse this to extract the data out of it. You know, the data is structured, but it's messy, right? It's hard to go in and, you know, it's just not worth your time, um, you know, building your own parser. Let's save this as empty cars JSON. Okay. And let's convert it back into an R object using from JSON. So empty cars JSON. And there we go. We get the empty cars data set back. Um, and that's pretty useful, right? Um, you're not losing anything. You can convert back and forth. Um, so this might even help you store data yourself, you know, on, in a flat file. Um, and stuff like that. So let's compare to see if these two are actually equal. So this and the original empty cars data set, let's, let's check if they're equal. So there's a built-in function called all equal. So this allows us to compare empty cars and then let's compare from JSON empty cars JSON, okay? And there we go. 
it's true. So these two are in fact equal. So converting a data frame into a JSON object and then converting it back into a data frame it results in the same data frame. Okay. So by default, the um, simplify vector parameter is um, set to true. So it's enabled. So let's define a, a very simple JSON object. Uh, so let's have like just a list of names, Mario, Peach, um, this is unknown, and Bowser. Again, if you're not familiar with JSON, this is this might seem confusing to you. Don't worry about it. This is how JSON objects are structured, uh, very simple ones. So then let's convert this into an R object. So this is a JSON object. Let's convert it into an R object. Um, and there we go. It's converted to a vector. Why? Because there's actually a parameter from JSON. And that parameter is called simplify vector. Okay. Simplify vector and it's by default, it's set to true. So by default, it's enabled. So if we were to disable this simplify vector equals false. In that case, it would return a list. So without simplification, a JSON array turns into a list in R. So let's let's create a slightly more complex JSON object and let this one be, you know, just a key, you know, a list of key value pairs of names of information relating to certain people. So, you know, we can have a name key and let's, you know, let's just go with the same pattern as above. Um, we got the first guy's name is Mario. Um, his age is 32 and his occupation is a plumber. Okay. And let's have the second person peach age 21 occupation princess. And then we said the third person is unknown. So that's just blank. And then we have Bowser and his occupation is Koopa. And then we don't know his age and, and that kind of stuff. So this is a very typical example of a JSON object. So we have key, key value pairs. So this contains some very nice, you know, structured information. So this is um, a very, you know, no SQL type of structuring of, of, of data. You know, this would normally be in a table, right? We would have um, a name column and we would have an age column, an occupation column and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So um, this is how you would structure that um, as a JSON object. And so let's convert this into an R object. So what happens? We get a data frame. And the reason for that is simplify data frame. It's enabled because it's set to simplify vector, which is set to true. So by default, it'll convert this JSON object into a data frame. So that's, that's pretty cool. Right. And then, you know, we can see that this one is missing and the age for Bowser is missing. So, you know, JSON objects are obviously that's, you know, that's why they're a little bit more um, flexible. Um, and sometimes preferred over like relational data structures, right? What if we were to save this to my DF? Okay. And let's add a column to my DF. So what is my DF currently? My DF is this. Let's add using the dollar convention. Let's add a ranking column and let's give them all a ranking. Okay. So if we print this out, there we go. We added a new column to, to the data frame. Now, if we were to convert this back into a JSON object, what would happen? We would see that now each object has a new key value pair, which is the ranking. Okay. It's very cool. It's very useful, very powerful when, if, if for anybody using JSON objects on a regular basis to be able to convert back and forth because often JSON files get very complicated, very difficult to read and to, to deal with that kind of stuff. And even with a, uh, you know, object this small, you can already see that's pretty confusing to see. It's not very suitable for human reading, right? Like to be able to figure out, you know, you can't, 
easily understand by taking one glance at this like what all the occupations are and that kind of stuff so there is actually another parameter within to json that lets you prettify the resulting json so if we were to prettify this it would be more organized you would see you know each person corresponding to a chunk and within that there's a new line for each key value pair and so on and so forth so this is, you know, this should be pretty much all you need to deal with JSON objects, how to extend your knowledge further if, if you need to using the documentation. But uh, this should pretty much cover everything you need to know on how to import um, JSON data and how to play with JSON data in R. So I will see you in the next section.